Are you recording the recording? I'm going to take a picture of the picture within the picture. And then are you, are we going to put it on like a pillowcase uh, and then take a picture of us holding that? Uh, I'm actually sending it to the missus. Uh, this is just for, like I, I have evidence that I'm actually you know, ah. with the dude. Although she, she'll probably reply yeah. like, oh, it's not like you're not going to suck his dick. You know? right. For all I know, that's why you have the camera set up. Yeah. <laughs> And then she's gonna print out that picture and then put me like where I rank on the on, on <laughs> like which which of my favorite Def Goldblum male mistresses. Is, <laughs> yeah, she replies like this one's my favorite. And you're like ah yeah. I was like, I it's tire skins. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, that's, that's one list. A tire skin would be taller than me on. And, he, and he, if he hears this, he's gonna be like distance me from that very. <laughs> you, you, you edit that out. Yeah, you can't. You can't have that out there. Yeah, I. <laughs> no, I. Uh, when when he was on here, even like I, there was one little joke I could like watch his body language where he was even like. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I sorry I called him uh, uh, chocolate caliente. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's very he is he's very hot. He's, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he's a handsome son of a gun. He's built very well. You know, yeah. he's got. You, you can tell he doesn't uh, skip arm day. Yeah, he he's he's. I enjoy his voice. Yeah, I, yeah he's he's got a, he's. It's not just the tone and stuff. But he has a way of speaking where it just. You know, I, I like I like that warmth. I like that, yeah, that full sense of security. Right. <laughs> right. But um, I think. I think Jordan is okay with me. I think. Uh, oh, my, yeah, your my, Jordan. My, my Jordan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Jordan. She okay. loves it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I just remember because, like, I think one of the first times she heard me do stand up was I think at your last birthday show, and I made some comment about um, for his birthday, Def just wanted to watch me fuck her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, 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 no. Honestly, and I'm pretty sure that was like the first impression I made. Yeah, her. no, and and she's she's expected it at this point. Like, like okay. so they're like. Well, of course, were... you guys met while uh, you were watching her folks. Yeah, exactly. No, no. no I, okay, uh... okay, okay. okay. <laughs> no. Edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> I can't be putting actual truth on the podcast. <laughs> she was uh, no, but with, with yeah, we're like <laughs> yeah. No, she. Uh... Uh, no, nah, she's used to the razzing. Like she's yeah. she's a beautiful girl. Yeah, and, it's uh, a beautiful woman. And uh, no, that's that's a constant joke of just like, Def, how the hell did you net that? And just like, yeah, yeah. Um, way 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 back in the day, <laughs> back when JD JD's uh, had a mic. Because I think that's the first time I, I didn't actually talk to her there. I just saw her and I was like, oh, hey, that's Def's girl. Um, yeah, I think every single comic didn't. Ad- didn't not address it. <laughs> like, like I barely knew you at the time, and I definitely didn't know her. And like I think I made one really quick little comment at it. But who was there was somebody that like they they took like a solid two, three minutes out of their time to be like, How is it? Yeah. Why? Yeah, why? why? Yeah. So so much so that I had like I eventually had to address it. Like, like where it's just like, listen, you know, we, we used to work together, we became very close friends. And uh, if you really want to know the secret on how to how to get you a really hot chick, you know, uh, especially if you're ugly, uh, just find you a chick that's addicted to fentanyl. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, no. I mean, like, to be honest, when we met, uh, like, yeah, she she was going through like addiction and stuff, and I uh, like we 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 were very close friends and stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, now she's an amazing stepmom to my kids. To yeah. be perfectly honest, uh, yeah, she's an amazing human being. Good here. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm for the first time ever. I'm going to go and try and put something in in post. Uh, right as soon as you said the uh, just get a girl with a good phone, I'm going to try and flash my phone number at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Call Destin now. Yeah. We can set up an 800 number for you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We don't, uh, I guess you don't even need 800 numbers. They got all kinds of free free phone numbers on right. there. Yeah. Or yeah, text uh, text uh, Destinal to uh, <laughs> Destinal to four two five five three. I don't know. <laughs> But um, anyway, uh, if you're still here, thank you for tuning in to the Destination Podcast. You, of course, already know me by now. Um, but across from me is the ever-hilarious Def Goldblum. 
Uh, Jeff Goldblum is a fellow uh, Nurkian that actually did the impossible and got out of Nurk. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. You, you can catch him uh, all over the city of Columbus. In fact, uh, he's putting on a show at Ruby Tuesdays, which he does one once a month anyway. Uh, Ruby Tuesday, the bar, not the restaurant. There is no salad bar. But um, <laughs> but so, yeah, I'm guarantee you might find somebody who will toss your salad. <laughs> And his name is Def Goldblum. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, he put, he puts on a show. Uh, he has one this Friday. I actually am now on it as well, yeah. uh, thanks to somebody dropping out. So he's like, well, somebody look. will have back soon. Uh, somebody yeah. who's out of town just kind of had a family emergency. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I was just kind of like, yeah. Yeah, so he, he had to scrape the bottom of the barrel for me. <laughs> um, and then also, you can catch us if you're in the Columbus area. Uh, June 2nd at the Attic, we are in a roast battle. And it is Def versus Destin. Yeah, yeah. I say we're being nice to each other now because the moment we get up there, it is nothing but blood. We, we decide. I, I feel like this is like a like with the like that counter like intelligence kind of thing where we're like mm-hmm. we're gonna sit down and be real cordial, but secretly we're like taking notes. Like, yeah, you know, like uh, I saw you, you. I saw. I'm, I'm picking up the ticks. Now. Yeah. Are you are you, a, are you a Sunny fan? <laughs> uh, I. I you know, I, I watched it in the past, but I've smoked enough weed to forget. Forget huge, a lot. Of, yeah, yeah, like like full of episode names, but when people start describing, go on. There's yeah. the the Charty McDennis episode where they made up their board game, and at the beginning they're like sipping wine and they're being very cordial and everything, and then the moment like the the buzzer goes off, they just start smashing shit and yelling in their faces. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be great. Yes, a uh, bunch of other comics on there as well. But again, we we just know we I I only know of him. I found out the the everybody, but like there's like two people I don't know on the show. Um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. And then also uh, June twenty fourth, the second day of Dest Fest, um, which oh actually. Dest-fest. Yeah, so Dust Fest is a two day comedy festival. Because I realize I'm going to. Dust Fest. Yeah, Dust Fest. Yeah. It's a two day comedy festival uh, celebrating uh, great Col- Columbus comics. Uh, and more importantly, me. It's his birthday. It's, it's my 30th yeah, yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah. But 36 comics, four musicians. <laughs> Very I went all out. We're celebrating. Columbus's best comedy. It's his fucking birthday. Yeah. And he's just like making sure that everybody comes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, the, the entire thing is just it. All right. So I, I almost didn't want to do it because uh, there's there's two groups of people when they when when someone brings up the name Destin Richardson, there's uh, there's three responses. Uh, there's number one, which is <laughs> um, there's uh, there's the second one, which is. Uh, I really, I really wish he wouldn't be so hard on himself. He needs to love himself. And then there's group number three, which is Destin Richardson. What a fucking egomaniac, that arrogant piece of shit. <laughs> so here's the thing: I hate that I am very much throwing a bone to group three. <laughs> for this one, this is one time where it's like there's nothing humble about this. No, I, I mean I, I do the same thing. Like so, like yeah. my my monthly show. It's last Friday of every month at Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, July is my birthday month, and my birthday is last week of July. So it, I do the same thing, which you're going to be on that one too. Like it's a it's a it's one of those things we uh, 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 turd birds of a feather, shit birds. It's yeah, a shit, shit birds, yeah. yeah, shit birds of a feather. We're we're we both. shit together. If, if you know anything about Newark, Ohio, I, I, while I wasn't born here, I, I've spent a large portion of my life, or had spent a large portion of my yeah. life. Wait, uh, where were you born? Uh, I was originally born in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You and, then, and then I, I went to high school out in the Zanesville area. Uh, see, that's where I was born. Yeah. So. Uh, and then, you have uh, an extra step there. Ba- baby mom, see, baby mama's family, uh, her parents live here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, like, uh, yeah, I'm a father so for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm a father of two and I've got a baby mama. Uh, she lives here in Newark. I'm okay with docs in that little bit. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and so that's where, uh, where I kind of came in. I was here for a while and, uh, even worked for, for AutoZone. I'm okay oh, with yeah. socks and that. Yeah. You, you're getting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey man, I, it's so far back. Like the only thing that might happen is you get a sponsorship. I was great there. They loved me. Right. Yeah, yeah. Did you work for Miller High Life by chance? Cause I've really been trying oh, to, get, no, I've been trying no. to get that one. But apparently like I, I, I have a better Dr. shot. Pepper, uh, or no, apparently, like, yeah, I, I, I want to work for Gator Light. Like, 
the the true uh, hair of the dog for alcoholics. Like, yes. like I I can't eat food because I need to hydrate. Gator light, you know, that's uh, I, that's that's a sponsorship that I think everybody needs to be honest about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, when was it in the uh, it was either in the falter or the Murph Henderson episode. Like I gave such a perfect ad for Miller High Life and they have still not responded to my emails. <laughs> um, like I gave my my like my TED talk, my uh, testament to uh, to Miller High Life. But nothing. Also, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. What are some other ones I've put out there that need Waffle House? Yeah. Waffle, Waffle House. Yeah, Waffle I was House. gonna say, like Waffle House. Like this man off camera sucks your cock so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like at least send him like a, a coupon. Like yeah. this fucker does every every yeah. show. Which I mean, it's it's kind of tradition. I'll, like, I will we, I will suck Waffle House's cock at Waffle. It's kind of tradition, like after a really good show, you know, comics are usually grab bite to eat. This motherfucker mm -hmm. is always like Waffle House, mm -hmm. and other people will suggest other things, but bar none, he will find a way to talk everybody into Waffle House. And I'm always thinking, there's, for it. Yeah. I'm with you. I, there's, I love Waffle House. There, there are certain topics of discussion you can always trust that Destin Richardson's going to bring up. Um, Shrek, <laughs> yeah, Limp Biscuit, Limp Biscuit, or slash also Creed, Creed, yeah. well, slash. We'll make that one group. Um, Waffle House, Sheets, Miller High Life, and Blowjobs. And we brought up two of those together organically yeah, yeah, yeah. before I even brought it up. So, so we call our roots. They're called white trash. <laughs> yes. yes. See, uh, and see, this is this for, is yeah. <laughs> for those watching on YouTube, I I went all white trashed out in honor of that. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I got the Limp Biscuit hat, the uh, the the. the Knock off Ed Hardy uh, from Walmart. See, I've listened to this on uh, uh, Apple, and I don't even know use Apple. That's just the link that like first came up on Google uh -huh. when I when I searched it. And so I I listened. I didn't even know there was a video portion of this, so I didn't get dressed up much at all. I'm actually wow. wearing what I went to an open mic in last night. Jim shorts yes. and this. I didn't get yeah. dressed up for that. I felt like an asshole. Like, and right. then at what which. Uh, can, can I reveal movie magic? Because you even said movie no, magic. No, no, uh, no, 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 Yeah, because when I got here, uh, Mark Faison was leaving, and he was dressed really dapper, and I was like, man, he didn't know there was a, there wasn't a camera for this. He's just stylish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, that's true. Like, for man, him, that's the, dressing he is, down. He is a very dapper uh, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he's he's on bigger stages where you have to look good. I kind of I kind of right. like the low lights of the late, late shows. You know, yeah. that's my thing. Uh, and so, yeah, that's why I, later I asked, uh, as you set things up, I was like, oh, is there a camera for this? He said, yeah. I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I am happy I dressed for the occasion. And then, and then that, that he reminded me, it's like, oh, I got to change my shirt because I got to keep up the lie <laughs> that every single guest gets their own special day. No, I'm mass producing this shit. <laughs> They're like the Marvel Cinematic Universe of podcasts. <laughs> I do three or four uh, every few Sundays. Well, although I took a nice long break, uh, also just because like either something came up or I was just having a hard time getting people to actually come. But no, now we're now we're back to where I have a couple in the bank and I can you know go about my life, just schedule the release uh, every Tuesday at five o'clock. <laughs> I, um, I, well, can I make a comment? I actually like that sort of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I really like knowing uh, kind of like I finding out like that how how different shows work and i like the the i like yeah you you're smart enough not just as a comedian he's very funny on the spot you guys know that but like he uh he he's clever enough to be like hey uh I, my time is limited and so are theirs mm -hmm. so hey can we kind of stack i know everybody kind of has this day can we you know and that's that's if you want to 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 when they talk about the hustle, that's that's the hustle. This man, like, look at that, look at look at that wife beater. It's got tigers and flowers on. And it. look at the clothes. And he's got a Balrog on his shoulder. The yeah. only thing he's missing is a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'll be back. Hustle. I'll be back. I'll hustle to the garage for Mountain Dew. No, um, yeah, because I, I mean Sundays are are always good for me because no post on Sundays. Um, and then I, I Sundays also good for most other people as well. Um, I mean, up until recently, there wasn't like a mic in Columbus on Sundays. So, you know, I could get people for like a Sunday evening. But uh, yeah, I would much rather just have like one of like one or two Sundays a month 
where I then record like you know three a piece. So I, I'm sitting on like five episodes when one comes out, and I can just trickle them out when I need to. Yeah. It's a, a less stressful way to go. And and as uh, a comic turned pr- producer, reluctantly, um, the production side of stress stresses me out more than anything. Like the jokes, I could. I, I, I'm good enough at comedy now to where I, I don't worry so much about my jokes. I worry about anything uh, behind the jokes, like the putting on the show or even just dealing with the few bookers that uh, reach out to me. So mm-hmm. uh, so you, you are also comic turned producer. Yeah. And so you're, you're getting a taste of the, uh, the not-so-limelight of that, the, that the, life. The anxiety part, man. Like, yes. like uh, For me, I... Uh, we were actually kind of talking a little earlier. I, uh, I with my mic, I, I have a showcase up front uh, where I can kind of book, bring some people from out of town or uh, people who recently, you know, local talent. Where it's like I've heard heard a comic, you know, has a new five ten minutes, and I was like, yeah, that's that needs to be seen by people, and that way I can kind of advertise and get people in the room. And then we do uh, it was originally open mic, but Halim is now taking over hosting the heckle mic after uh, Halim mm-hmm. Bashir. Yeah, uh, great comic. Yep. Um, but uh, I lost track of my own thought there. Uh, <laughs> producer life. Producer life. The anxiety of like, uh, like the fear of rejection. Like I, I often reach out to people, and I, I it's, it's you're always, you're always kind of afraid. Like I, I usually pe- people, I, I've, I've now said like, yes, please reach out. Like if you're interested in being on a show, please reach out. I. Uh, I'm, I, I often like to talk to, to not just my friends, but the people I think are the funniest. And so I will, I, I, it's not just, uh, I'm reusing people because it's like they're, he said he's the shoe and it's like, no, he's got a bunch of new material that, uh, I know the room hasn't heard. And so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I get a lot of anxiety when it comes to that, like the booking or people yep. falling through, you know, which oh, happens. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I never take that personal. That's life. Yeah, I, I, exactly. There's there's very few times where it's, I felt like it's ever been like a malicious thing or somebody has a drop. But man, the uh, the stress it puts me under. Um, and and I I only had one for Dest Fest uh, so far. Um, but uh, the ones that really got me was the first. Well, actually, every single time I've done a roast that I produced something has uh went upside down like the day of or like days before um like the batman roast uh wonder woman booked a gig in cleveland that day and she's like there's more money in this one anyway so i'm taking that um fortunately i had someone step in the day of and it was the person i originally wanted um there was something else maybe that happened batman uh thanos or black panther um Three days out, found out he could not get the the time off work, hmm. and then uh, our Black Widow was a no call no show, and then um, the Halloween roast, um, our uh, Pennywise, aka Death Fucking Goldblum, um, had had a very legitimate uh, medical uh, yeah. emergency that yeah, day. That day, that uh, trust me, I would have absolutely had excused. <laughs> um, but no, it, it like it a goddamn champ. But def like yeah, exactly like a champion of men. <laughs> I'm not one to step my own ego, up. but I was like that that it wasn't even like my own medical thing. It was a family member, and uh, when they realized I was by their side, they were like they li- like I, this is so cheesy. They were just like. It, it, aren't you going to be that clown guy? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He was like, I've been that clown guy for years. <laughs> yeah. But he was just like, he was like, go do that shit. Nobody died or anything. He, he was okay. But he was just like, he, 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 he was there for me writing it. Cause I was as, because I was playing Pennywise and it was a roast of these other characters. Uh, me and my, my girlfriend, Jordan, we were watching all these different movies and stuff. And uh, I, I was just sitting there like, you know, riffing while we were watching them. So yeah, yeah. that was a fun show too. I, it, it was, and for a guy that honestly went my whole life not being that big of a fan of horror movies, it was fun to to dive in all at once into that world. Like that's my thing. Like if I'm going to try something, I love like just getting deep into it, right? Yeah. Um, like uh, there's <laughs> like some, so <laughs> some low hanging fruit there. Yeah. I actually I I wanted to grab and take a bite out of, but I'm going to try and be the bigger. Um, uh, <laughs> See, I, no, I love I, I I'm like you. I, I love diving into like it's it's a culture. 
horror yeah. movie fans like it's not just like the movies oh, yeah. like you could always just be like uh horror movie uh, horror films as uh, as films are viewed as it's like no they have a whole fucking subculture mm-hmm. you know and they have their own cultures within that like i i like to like a uh uh, uh, uh like what do you call it have a tissy fit or mm-hmm. a tism fit, you know. I like to, tissy fit, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like to, I like to go down rabbit holes like that, you know. Oh yeah, uh, it's a, and, and just like absorb everything. I can, I can learn about the, you know, uh, like juggalos. Yeah, like like I, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't get to do this. I, I had another friend though. Uh, he, he was, he didn't grow up with ICP, but he like found out about the Juggalo Fest and how wild it was, and so uh-huh. he was just like, uh, I, he was a coworker and he was a software engineer, and he was just like. Hey, uh, so I'm going to the, the, the Juggalo Festival or whatever it's called. And I was like, I'm Legend Valley. He's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, for real? He's like, yeah, why not? Like, and he like, he came back with like the, the craziest fucking like, tw- what is it? Twista or Twister? Twist, well, there's Twit. Twisted. Twisted. Yeah. Okay, like this crazy twisted. The twist up was there, I'd be there. <laughs> it was this engineering firm, like an AI engineering firm, legitimately. Yeah. And like like the engineers don't have to dress up. You know, you know, everybody else is and he comes walking through with ICP merch on, like it no, like it's no big deal. He's like, yeah. let me tell you about my weekend. It's like <laughs> <Right>. please. <laughs> I uh so w- while we're on record here, I want to I want to actually say something. So like I I want to apologize to jugglers and jugglers for anything I've ever said in the past because uh, I did a show and it popped up on my Facebook memories pretty recently. Um, I did a, a comedy show up in Michigan. And as soon as I got there, I immediately realized, oh, my God, I'm on a juggalo uh, comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I, you know what? Maybe I should mention that I'm not from Newark anymore. I should take that off my profile. <laughs> People assume that I'm down with the clown. Um, but I, I get off and I'm immediately like, oh, this is not going to go well. And I get there and immediately the, the staff working the show, like they, had the, they, they went legit on the production. They had multiple people. They had lanyards. That's all you need to be legit is just have lanyards. Yeah, it's it's true. You don't even have to have the real card. You can just keep like like it could be like you go to Walmart and buy like a Paw Patrol lanyard and yeah, just keep the, right. the one with the the police dog in it. They're just right, gonna think right. your security lets you through. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I get there and they give me this giant care package once I finally walk up to the place. Has my lanyard. Has my my drink my drink tokens. Has my my meal voucher. Um, had a very custom made blunt for me and i don't even smoke weed but i was just so taken aback by the generosity oh, no that's that's talk about a green room yeah. oh like, my god yeah <laughs> and like rolled in keith and everything yeah oh, it was beautiful it, it, it was still beautiful it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i gave it to hp <laughs> good uh yeah um <laughs> that's why he is the way he is yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no and there was a bunch of other little things in here had, had paid me up front too which to this day, the only promoters that have ever paid me up front. Um, and I even promote produce my own shows and I don't pay me up front. Um, and we get on this, and they had like they had a bus, a school bus, that they gutted out and like turned into like a uh, Newark RV. And like they, they put a, house? They, yeah, they, yeah. They put a they put a toilet on there, they had like a little they call that a double wide. Yeah. yeah. And uh no, they rolled out the red red carpet. Uh, it was a good show, despite my initial uh, j- judgment. I'll say judgment. I was in the wrong. Um, the Juggalo Juggalo community treated me better than any other producer I've worked with to this day. Now, I, I, do I'll I, back that. Th- so, yes, I have nothing but respect for the family. Um, now, do I like Insane Clown Posse's music? Fuck no. Nah, no, it's not, not good. Thing, no. But... I have respect to the community. And um, I also, there was one year I came so close to going to it because of, again, all of the other artists that do their shows. Yeah. There was a year they had, well, they almost always have Tech Nine. They almost always have Twisted. Uh, they had Hobson. Um, oh, that's right. They've had, uh, the year that I was interested in going, Hobson was there. And that they was, also uh, had Asking Alexandria. It was the, the brief period of time where Dennis was the vocalist, not Danny. Okay. okay. Um, they had Amur. 
they had and there was like one more other band like on like the rock metal side that i saw it and i'm like man i would go and then leave the moment i, <laughs> I hear i hear yeah, shaggy too yeah. dope yeah kind of like when hawthorne heights walks out yeah right <laughs> 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 we love Hawthorne Heights. We do. No disrespect. We've we heard do. Hawthorne Heights a lot. We're, yes. we're, we 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 grew up with Hawthorne Heights. Yes, we did. Um, on the other side of the state, we still saw them. We yeah. Them out. Yeah. But we um, went to the show to see. Yeah. Them, well, recently we we yeah, we saw Armor for Sleep, and then Def was like, "All right, I want to make the singer of <laughs> Armor for Sleep very uncomfortable. very uncomfortable." And then I want to leave. Yeah. And I did. I succeeded. Oh, yeah. Uh, the flying colors. Yeah. We were the only guys in line to meet the lead singer uh, <laughs> for Armor for Sleep. And uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, he's, it, they're, they're good shit. It was, like, yeah, it was, it was a fun good show. Time. <laughs> it was a good show. It was yeah, actually, they fucking killed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just love watching his body language <laughs> as Def is opening his mouth. Yeah. And I, at that point, I'm like mildly roasting Dad, bringing yeah. him back into the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget what it was that I, 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 I started. I was just like, hey, I really, well, and you also were just like, uh, he was like, oh, what? You, you were like, yeah, but we missed your first part of your saw or your set or whatever. You said something along the lines of just like. Yeah. I was just like, motherfucker, I'm like sitting here telling him, like, I loved it all. It was all amazing. And, and then oh, he yeah. was and like, was... but we missed like all of the songs he wanted to hear. Yes. We, <laughs> yes. Yes. I did start out with that. I was like, so uh, that, that, I, I was like, thank you for playing Remember to Feel Real. Because that's my favorite song. We didn't make it in time for Truth About Heaven, which is his favorite song. Yeah. So missed that. But thank you for playing my favorite song. <laughs> Jeez, Piece of you, shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> God, you deserve a roast. I, I do. Yeah, I'm thankful I get to do two. Yes, you, you do. Uh, but yeah, that that, that was I, that happened one other time. Uh, as far as like being like the only guy in the the meet and greet lineup <laughs> was the very first time I ever saw Hawthorne Heights because I've seen them three times. Uh, if any members of Hawthorne Heights are listening, please come on the podcast. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah! But uh, the first time I saw them, they were actually headlining because this was like in their prime. Um, and it was Nintendo Fusion Tour. It was Hoffman Heights, um, Reliant K, um, Emery. Ooh, yeah. Um, and then Plain White Tees, right? Free. Yeah, right this, before yeah. Hater Delilah. Yeah, I was gonna up. say this has to be right, yeah, before right that. before. And then the sleeping opened up, yeah. but I was in the I, I did the meet and greet like afterwards because at the time, I'm going to admit, I wasn't a fan of Emery, I am now. I, I now like them, but when I first heard them, I wasn't a fan. So I took the time during Emory set, and I went out and I like met the band. And here's the thing: uh, Plain White Tees, for those of you who don't know, five person band. Four of the members very accessible, as in nobody was talking to them. <laughs> that's how that's usually how it is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, uh, and I was like, "Hey, I'm a bass player. I want to talk to the bass player. Yo, the drummer's tight. I want to talk to him." Let me talk to the singer. Oh wait, no, Army of Women. <laughs> I, I I did a meet and greet once where uh, uh, there were no women. <laughs> what? Yeah, Coheed and Cambria. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, uh, Coheed and Cambria, uh, uh, Avenged Seven hold headliner tour. Mm. Coheed was the one that closed out, but uh, I don't think anybody was sticking around. Like it, most, of, I would say most of the crowd came for. Avenged. Avenged. Yeah. It was. This was at a. It was Tower City in Cleveland at the time. It was okay. one of the best concerts I've ever been to, and uh, Avenged like fucking killed it. This was uh, during the City of Evil shit, so it was backcountry. Oh, during their peak. That's it was my, their peak. That's my favorite. Uh, and it was peak Coheed. So it was. Uh, it was actually right before the the band kind of broke up for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, the meet and greet was after that. Uh, uh, Good Apollo with the Welcome Home. Yes. You know, all that stuff. Uh, they had like set pieces with little fence and lights and fog and all that kind of right. Crap. But at the meet and greet, uh, I remember going through them with my roommate at the time. I got him into the band, and uh, you mentioned like everybody always wants to get their picture taken with the lead singer. And uh, we had like the little flip phones, but mine like was this little cool slider one with a really shitty like like tiny meta- terrible fuzzy f- picture. And I was like, oh, I gotta get my picture. People, other people get the picture. We're at the end of the yeah, line, right, right. and uh, I noticed everybody was just getting their picture with Claudio. Like, cause yeah, he's the front man, but like, I miss that hair anywhere. Like I, as a guitar, like we're both musicians. Like if you like a band, you usually, if you're a guitarist, you wind up enjoying 
the lead guitarist too. And, right. and so they're both sitting there. I was like, can I get a picture of both of you? And the lead guitarist it was just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, absolutely, yeah. And so, like, I, I went to come around the table. They're like, you can't come back here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Got my picture taken. Uh, went down the basis. Uh, I could tell he was on something. Like, I didn't know what being on something looked like, but he was on something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, the drummer was just completely like he looked like he was upset, pissed off. I wasn't even trying to take to him. Like, we were probably in and out in probably a minute. Uh, but uh, we I had them all sign, you know, the liner notes. And I, I was walking away, and I opened it up, and it was Claudia, Travis, X Y. Who the fuck is X Y? Uh, must have been the bass player because uh, he, he he I saw him sign on that one. And uh, F U, <laughs> <laughs> not fuck you, F. You is what uh, uh, Josh uh, Eppard wrote at the time. I forget. Nice. Uh, he was he was on he was going through some shit. We all yeah, shit, some shit. Sometimes. That's the that's the thing. Sometimes <laughs> like, sometimes you just have to accept that like like you know some they they have feelings too. They have hardships that they go through. Yeah. They've been on the road. They miss their families. They miss their. I've, you know, I've I've looked at an audience and told them to fuck off. I'm pretty sure I've done that this week. You know, yeah. like like. And it's and I wasn't even mad at the audience. I was probably just you know being stupid. But like yeah, yeah we all we all have bad days and uh, right. or or bad times. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say like I if I, I I'm of all the like the famous ish people I've ever met, I've fortunately not ever had the experience of someone being like, you know, rude or standoffish or anything like that. Like, um, I mean there was. Actually, no, there was a time that Toby Maguire called me a cunt. Um, <laughs> Deservedly so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say there's a like the one time where I was I was handled the rudest and, and it was uh it was uh, at the Columbus Zoo. Mm -hmm. And uh I think you already know where this is going. I was in the like food court area, yeah. and I look over and sure enough, here comes Jack Hanna. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh shoot, it's Jack Hanna. I grew up with this like you know, Jack Hanna animal adventures and stuff. And I was like, Jack Hanna. And he he was like, not now, kid. I was like, ah. Oh. And he went, spit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He did He did go. go. Only, he, only. That's how it felt. Like, he he pretended he didn't hear me and rushed into a back door. Yeah. But, like, that's that's how it felt. He might as well just spit in my mouth. <laughs> 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 but now I get it. Like, like if I if I saw the some, some snotty... If I saw some snot nosed seven year old like standing there and they were running me, Def Goblin, Def Goblin, I'd be like, Not now, kid. And I might actually spit in their face. Yeah. 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 yeah spit like, around. What are they going to do? Sue me? They, they're not a person. They don't have rights. Right, they're a right. child. <laughs> child. Children don't have rights. <laughs> <laughs> At least they, uh, in, in, a, in a perfect country, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but no, I, uh, I'm just kidding. I've not met, I have not met Toby McGuire. <laughs> but I'm sure if I ever did meet him, he would probably call me a cunt and spit my mouth. And by my story, I still haven't met Jack Hanna. <laughs> I, uh, I, I actually, I, what episode was it? There was a previous episode of mine. It might have been on the Wesley or the Nick Rowe episode. One of the two musicians. And uh, I told the story about my meeting of Blake Shelton. And like, admittedly, I probably shouldn't have said it on a podcast because it's like, kind of very illegal. Um, but like, tr don't do not cancel Blake Shelton if you listen to that episode. Do not. I hold. What it did, he, did he say? Did he say a, a slur? What happened? No, no, no. He gave me my first beer when oh. I was fifteen. Oh, oh. yeah. And yeah. the thing is, I wanted to audition. Were for your the parents voice. present? Uh, no, because they were talking to Trace Atkins. Uh, they both came to our campground. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They were partying like at my. But parents were your parents? Would your parents have been cool with it? Who, like, like, By that point, yeah, yeah they, yeah, they were drunk off that. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were going like here. <laughs> yeah, my mom was too busy trying to sit on Trace. I can't. I, I've met your parents. I can't imagine your dad being like, "How dare you give my son oh, his no. first beer?" No. No. <laughs> I'd it's, love to see your dad no. throwing down with Blake Shelton. This is Blake Shelton like a mile high yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, they're both pretty tall. <laughs> um, no, no, my mom would be the one that would like be not cool with it. But again, um, she was trying to sit on Trace Atkins's face. So. Yeah, who wouldn't? Yeah, it, I'll, I'll tell you who wouldn't. Uh, me. Because <laughs> I was busy drinking with Blake Shelton. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were like, I was trying to sit on Blake Shelton's face. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sit on mine. Yeah. Uh, 2017. Is he the one that's with Gwen Stefani now? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'll say that's a 2017 sexiest man alive. Yep. I, I grew up with such a crush on Gwen. Who didn't, right? Yeah. I, uh, uh, oh, my dad. My dad one time. I, I'll never forget this 11-year-old me. 
him saying, uh, it was, uh, don't speak was on. He goes, I, I love, I love the lead singer of no doubt. Gwen. I was like, yeah, he's like, every time she sings, it sounds like she's having an orgasm and he's right. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, 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 there's always that, gosh, that extra, gosh, uh, uh, it's breathy. It, yeah. It's very Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's sexy as hell. Yeah. 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 Well, she also dressed very revealing. Yes. I wouldn't yeah. call her a slut, but if she'd let me, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Shelton, Shelton Willing. <laughs> right. He has a hot wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that's still, uh, yeah, I almost wanted to audition for The Voice. Uh, and this it would have been like season two or three, so like where it was still very possible to get on, like it was still in its infancy. But like, I really wanted to. I wanted Blake to turn around. And then like, as soon as it cuts to, me having the mic. I'm like, so Blake, you probably don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but you handed a 15 year old uh, a Budweiser for the first time. And I want you to know it tasted awful. But just to say, so you know, I don't have any feelings. And I reach in my back pockets and I throw him a Budweiser. I have one. We're like, cheers, Blake. But by this point, the producers of The Voice are already like, cut, cut, cut. 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 Yeah, it's over. It's cut the fucking camera. You know. Meanwhile, Blake's like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I, I, it's, it's, well, it's just past the 15. I, oh, we're the, we're yeah. the same age. 15 was a yeah. long time ago. Oh, yeah. Bro, Statue so. of limitations of that yeah, story is long. He's gone. good. He could have fucked you back then, and he's okay now. <laughs> right, right. No. Right? Is that okay now? Yeah. Or, yeah, uh, I don't know. But... No, because that was Keith Urban. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Look at that hair. I'd be Keith fucking Keith Urban. Urban. Yeah, Keith Urban. Keith Urban. Uh, I was like grabbing that, that hair. Uh, does uh, he have any country songs about kangaroos? No, I don't think he does. Like, I what, think a, I know, what a shame. What a shame. He should have like a, like he, like when he's like in his twilight years needs to have like, the, you know, country western outback. You know, right. like, like Marty Wa Robbins had like the, the gunfighters and the Western album. I was like, what what is it? Like, what's what do they call them in the outback that are they call they call them cowboys? They, I think they actually call them cowboys out there at, at this point or something like that. I mean, we probably should Google this before I like they're like, uh, no, we don't call Wait, the, those the, people cowboys. The That's some sort of slur. Wait, the Australian, the Australian. Outback. Yeah, I'm not talking about like the, the aboriginal, like the yeah, native yeah, yeah. people. Kind of thing. Oh, okay, but like just people, but like the people who, uh, yeah, there's they have, they, they're essentially a version of cowboys. I think they just call them cunts. <laughs> it's Australia. Oh, yeah, it's everything. Australia. They call everybody cunts. They call yeah. everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of fly is that? That's a cunt fly, <laughs> kind of snake, cunt snake. Yeah, say my cunt a little too British there, yeah, a little, a little bit. It was a little cunty, yeah, a little too cunty. <laughs> It's all about the A. Eh. I can all, we could you, you know, say eh. it sucks we can only do white accents like, anymore. Kind of, uh, it, yeah, it's yeah, like, I'm eh. gonna say that out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We grew because that's another thing with our age. We grew up like allowed to like do accents. Now it has to be an actual impression. Has, yeah. It has to be an impression. So like, uh, that's the rule. Nail, now. You you need to nail the and it has to be one specific person. Like if you if if you're gonna if you're gonna do Jackie Chan, you better be able to sound like Jackie Chan. Yeah. Like and you better do, actually be able to do your own stunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you I, better be able to to promote communist China. Actually, I might be. No, I'm I'm gonna addendum that. Like, you might be able to pull off a, a, a bad Jackie Chan if you can do a good Chris Tucker. But even then, that's not good for the stage. That's like one's yeah. friends, you know. Like, yeah. Um, I'll say like, <laughs> with like, I can do like a pretty. I can actually do a, a halfway decent Chris Tucker, but like. I also can't anymore. That, yeah, same. Cause, I was cause just trying someone, to think. I was like, if someone doesn't think it's a good Chris Tucker, then I'm a racist. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you go. What's this doing, man? What's this, what's this like doing, man? You got to find something where it's not him saying, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you never touch. I, 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 yeah, I can't do his voice and say touch a black man's radio. Really? I don't. I, I don't. And it's not because it's not, it, it's racist. It's because I don't think I can actually pull that particular line off in his voice. I don't have a killer Chris Tucker. It, it, I, have a, I have a killer Ruby Rod. Uh, that's okay. what I have. Yeah. I uh, I have a pretty killer Hannibal Burris. I have a pretty killer Eddie Murphy. Um, I have a pretty killer. Um, there's one other like like black actor that I can do a really good one of. Wanda Sykes. If only. <laughs> if only. <laughs> I love her so much. Same. Yeah, I wish I could do a good one. Uh, I'm trying to... I, I, 
I, impressions are fun. I just I like voices. Like voice, like that's the thing. It's like like I hear like, it in my head so much. Exactly, yeah. and it's always different ones. Mm-hmm. I, when I was a kid, uh, my family uh, we had a construction company, and my dad was a joker. That's a that's a bit of like a hell. You're like, might talk about your inspirations. I'm like, I'm gonna make it bullshit. Here's yeah. some real shit. Uh, it, we work construction. We work up here in Columbus uh, while living out either here in New York, Zanesville area, in between, and. Uh, uh, we come up here, and I think it's the the one that they're in the process of tearing down Mount Carmel. I don't remember which one it was. I kind of remember it because like how we come in, we come in really early, but we'd have to take the elevator <clears throat> up. And uh, uh, my dad would start playing pranks on people, and so like he would put his face in the corner and start counting mm-hmm. just to kind of make people uncomfortable. And that's where my humor I kind of realized like I love making people uncomfortable. So I had one that I, I would I would I came up with because like when I talk to the animals at home, you'd be like, oh yeah, oh, my little stupid little dogs. You know, my mom had chihuahuas, like little shit dogs. You know, oh you're a little piece of shit. I love you. You know that kind of voice. Yeah. And uh, and so one day I, I just hit me and my, I, I was, there were a couple guys behind us and uh, my dad is to my left and I was just kind of like, uh, ow, stop doing that. Well, I didn't do it. Bob did it. No, I didn't. And, and I watched, I, like I, I said it, my, I watched my dad kind of stifle a laugh and I just kind of looked forward. And my dad said he turned and he watched these two guys just kind of like back up themselves. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. so, and uh, like, I, I'm, I'm probably like, I, looking back now, I was like, that's like, I, I'm making that connection in the moment. Like that's, that's yeah. where my shit, that's where my, my weird shit comes from. Yeah. And uh, actually I got a story to share from that. Something that just happened regarding my, 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 my own pro, uh, progeny. Right. Uh, my my kids. Go, uh, go for it. Yeah, this is this is a, this is a fun one. Uh, my kids know what I do. They know what I tell these. My daughter hates it. Uh, she <laughs> she's like, I take things too seriously. I was like, that's a problem here. <laughs> but my son, he's he's uh, a couple years ago figured out what I did, and since then he's constantly trying to write jokes and shit. Like, mm-hmm. which aren't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who? Yeah, you know, every kid does. Now he's like, I've got to make dad laugh. So we'd been out running. Uh, he had school. They were off from school on Friday. Been out running errands. He come out from Target and get in the car. And everybody's quiet. I'm in the passenger seat. Stepmom's driving, and he's in the back seat. He's five. He goes, "Hey, can I ask you guys a question?" He's like, "Yeah, sure, bud. You know, no problem." And he's just like, "Why did the chicken cross the road?" I'm like, "All right, here we go." Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's five years old. I don't care how corny is. I'm gonna be for it. here. Right. He's like, "I was like, I don't know, bud. Why?" He's like. Cause it wanted to die. <laughs> and so like, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I kind of laughed. Yeah. I was like, he's got a dark humor, which yeah. like uh, baby mama, uh, she's got a dark humor. Uh, stepmom, uh, the only subscription service she pays for is Disney plus. And that's uh, for her. Uh, yeah. Like, 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 like uh, so I, 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 I kind of look over at her and she is side eyed and be just like, what the hell? You know, like, yeah. And he's like, Hey guys, can I ask you another question? <laughs> well, I start giggling at this point. I'm like, where is it? Okay, okay, sure, bud. He goes, "Why did the car cross the road?" I was like, uh, "I don't know why." And he's like, "To kill the chicken." <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I actually, I want to laugh, but I actually kind of bite my tongue. I'll be honest, because I know she's freaking out, and I looked yeah. at her, and she literally side eyes me and goes, "What the fuck, dude?" You know, like, yeah. like she's now worried about about her 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 little stepson because that's not her kid. Like, this is her worst nightmare having like. The, the the omen child yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like turning in tur- like and uh like while she's like mid panic he goes can I ask you guys another question <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and 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 I I I I can feel her shaking her head like now I was like yeah and he goes you want to know what happened to the chicken and I was like what and he goes the car swerved I lost my fucking mind. That's the funniest damn thing I've ever heard in my life. That's a the, the joke just took the, a literal left turn. Like yeah. I, I I've never been more proud of my child in my life. Like right. that I think is is I I I I I I, I, I had to like wait, in the moment I was like I now have to tell this story. Like this is right. this is uh, my son is funnier than anybody who ever will listen to this. Or either of us. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, like he wins bar none. That is the ultimate anti joke. Yes. Like I thought my son was mentally ill. <laughs> I I thought my my and and the immediately like relief of stress of just knowing my son is sane yeah. <laughs> was a relief for both me and stepmom. Like she 
But I was like, that's funny. She's like, that was fucked up. I'm like, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm messaging Ian Miller right now saying, hey, can I run Steph Goldblum's son? And <laughs> he sounds like a better He sounds match. way better. Yeah. Like, yeah. like uh, he, I, I felt, he, I feel I like he's I writing love, for me now. You know? I love that he also, he stuck to rule of threes too. That was it. That yeah. was something else. Uh, I didn't realize that until like, that happened on this past Friday. Yeah. And uh, I was at a show that night, and I was talking to somebody, and we were we were just bullshitting, and it came up. I was like, "Oh yeah, my son did this today. Let me tell you this joke." And they're like, "He did the rule of threes." And I was like, "I know." Like, which I mean, I I've, I don't think we've ever had a conversation about that. I know yeah. I've talked to his sister about it because she's like, "I don't get jokes," <laughs> you know. <laughs> like I said, she takes she likes she's she takes things very seriously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, nah, it's uh, it's 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 kind of great. It's kind of great having that kind of influence. But, the, in a wholesome manner, I think it's pretty wholesome. All right. So, uh, despite uh, despite having uh, schizophrenic episodes in the <laughs> hospital, uh, so where else would you say that you got the uh, the initial love of comedy? Why you want to do it? Uh, I, actually, I'd certainly say my father was a huge part of it. Uh, it, it, it not just that. Uh, uh, we grew up in a very uh, conservative religion, Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses, mm-hmm. uh, which like you're really not supposed to listen or consume any. Uh, inappropriate or demonic material things that uh anything r-rated or parental advisory or anything that has aka fun yeah 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 so my dad had a small collection of cassettes that he would have hidden in his van that he would like while we'd drive to work or whatever and this is like even as a kid because I, I would go with him when i was real little like mid 90s into the early aughts mm-hmm. uh, listen like red fox and uh and uh cosby i'll be pre- mm-hmm. I mean, at the time it was okay you know mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and things like that. Um, I love that I yawned the moment you said Cosby. Cosby, yeah, yeah. Un- appropriate, unintentional appropriate. comedy, folks. Uh, and then uh, I, because I was a Jehovah's Witness, like, like there's a they, they teach you how to think, and you're not allowed to think otherwise. And when I was in high school, a buddy of mine who was a little older than me, he was also a witness, uh, was like, "You should listen to this guy called George Carlin. You'd really like him. He plays with words, and you like to play with words." And uh, uh, George Carlin uh, made me realize just how much bullshit there was in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, that was, that was my first uh, me uh, going woke. <laughs> yeah. If you're yeah. anti woke, uh, you're anti Carlin. Like, I don't think you realize like, and if yeah. you're anti Carlin, you're a fascist. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like that's what we call a Nazi. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, that's, uh, that's, I really, I really love those guys. But, uh, the person that I didn't realize was a stand-up comic who I think had one of my biggest, their biggest influences was Norm Macdonald. Uh, I think yeah. he's, he's easily uh, one of my, my, my biggest uh, heroes. I, uh, he's, he's, I, I think he, he is uh, both way smarter and way dumber than he himself could ever imagine. You know, that's it. Like, like he, he, uh, he, he he understood the value of not being. You don't like. There's nothing cool about being the smart guy in the room. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, you have a lot more to 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 gain from learning, uh, right? And 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 just listening. Uh, yeah, I, I really really love Norm. Yeah, yeah well, it's not funny anymore. We we're mm-hmm. getting we're getting sentimental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. <sighs> I'll say a snooze fest. <laughs> I know I'm the one that I, I, I don't want to seem like I don't care about your influences. No, I, do. Well, and I, I, I can say this about Norm. You know, when, they, when no. he passed, it was a surprise to everybody. They say he passed of cancer, or they, they said he had cancer. I was like, that's funny. I always thought he was a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> I only laugh because I am a cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I know I'll be the death of me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I am. Um, um, Oh yeah, yeah, I remember right after Norm passed, I went back and you know listened to his older stuff. And I mean, I love that the opening track of one of the specials was about man, it would sure suck to die. Yeah, and like talk yeah. and like he just talked about like how he thought he was gonna go and how, why he wouldn't want to go at all. He's like, because man, like life is life is great, and like it was it was really hitting hard after the fact. And I mean, I know because again, as you said. He's way smarter and way dumber. Obviously, the smartness comes in because he's like, hey, he's preparing for the day when it happens. People yeah. are, are going to listen to his material after he's gone. He's like, what can I throw them to really 
hit him. Yeah. And yeah, yeah him just talking he, about his love of life, which, you know, obviously. And uh, it was, a, it was a way of him talking about it without talking about it. You right. Know, that was something that's, that's something I. For, with painting the, with very wide strokes. That's uh that was a, the, the biggest, actually, I would, yeah, I can say that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned from it was, you know, there's, there's a lot of problems in this world and Carlin at the time he could run out full, you know, he, nobody else was, and right. he could run with his teeth barred. Uh, now, like the last president, that's all he did was run at everything yelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? uh, I, I, if we want to talk like my favorite modern comic, uh, Joe Para. Okay. I think Joe Para, uh, like, like he's like a, a, a he, he's very soft spoken. Uh, he, he's he's like the Mister Rogers of comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, just wholesome, you know. Uh, he's like he's the Joe Biden. You know, he's literally mm -hmm. sleepy Joe Biden. Joe Para. You know, he, yeah. Joe Para talks you to sleep. Is his was one of his things on Adult Swim. You know? Right. Uh, if you don't know who he is, big big recommend. Big recommend. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, yeah. I also. I remember Norm from uh, one of my favorite lines of my childhood was when he was the voice of Lucky the dog in Doctor Doolittle. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. I, I don't think I've seen. I, I haven't seen the Eddie Murphy Doctor the Doolittle in, like, well, since I was a kid. Yeah. Okay. I was just. I was gonna say. I. Uh, it's much better than the Robert Downey Jr. one. <laughs> um, but no, I also. Yeah, I remember his just when they. Uh, Gave him the rectal thermometer, but just all sick up. Like, ah, hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, I remember that. That was also my first uh, experience with Chris Rock, ironically, as the gerbil. <laughs> um, like, the cast was so great for that movie. And yeah, that was one of my favorite movies ever as like a young, young kid. And to this day, for anybody to, again, this is uh, for a very specific group of people. To anyone that distinctly remembers watching the VHS of that movie, I say VHS like there was much of an option. Yeah, you know, when it first came out, it was just VHS. But just VHS. But uh, the beginning of the VHS, there was a commercial, and it was for like some <laughs> like uh, healthy, like cut back on junk food, like propaganda. Uh, oh thing. yeah. And it was you would download a car, that kind of shit. But yeah, for yeah, food, yes, yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah, for like eating healthy, and it was this commercial. First, uh, a fake product called Gopher Cakes, and I will remember that jingle till the day I fucking die, please, even if I have Alzheimer's. Please, which is uh, open wide, stuff your face for these gopher, gopher, gopher cakes. <laughs> and the thing is, the, the uh, I have to put a link in uh, to the YouTube. I, I will have, yeah. yeah, I will actually yeah. find it. I'll put it on the Destination Podcast uh, page. Make sure you don't like take it to some official one, but some random person who's never like like has like three views on their version of Absolutely. the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way, like when they get like a trickle of five or six more views, they're just kind of like, "Where did this fucking come from?" Right, right, look right. at the analytics, and it comes back to this. <laughs> right, you, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> and the thing is, they look so goddamn good. Oh, like I remember. Are they, are, is it supposedly like made from real gophers? <laughs> no, uh -huh. no, no, no. Um, like the, there was like this really cute gopher oh, packaging. Only twenty percent gopher. <laughs> right, right. Um, they made gopher caramel, but um, no, it was it basically it just like picture like a ho ho, but then they also shoved a whole bunch of like caramel and peanut butter in them as well. Ooh. Or not, not, not ho hos. Um, ding dong, ding dongs. Yeah, yeah. They, they looked like just big giant ding dongs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. That, that's a short clip that I'll put out there. <laughs> yeah, just, just us people uh, uh, heading it up. Just, uh, 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 uh. So, um, yeah, anyway, so, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, you know Benjamin Babish? Yeah, yeah. I need, I need to, like, get that on a comment section of, like, he needs to recreate Gopher Cakes. From, oh, the from the Dr. Doolittle commercial. Yeah. Oh my god. That, I'm sure you could probably like use social media to like drum up like, hey, anybody remember this? And then like yeah. repost it. Maybe we can get this on Vinging with Babbage. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it yeah. You gotta start virally, make it feel organic. Right, right, right. right. Nobody's gonna hear it in this first, and then when they Hell see no. the post, yeah. yeah. Hell no. People have already stopped listening after like the five minute mark. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were yawning. I know they're asleep. Yeah, right, say, right. The, yeah, yeah, if I'm asleep and I'm, I'm the one that actually cares about this. This stuff. is where the subliminal messaging stuff comes in, right? <laughs> right. What should we tell them while they're asleep? I'm like, um, you must kill the, the prime minister. <laughs> Your family hates you. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. That would be terrible. <laughs> Everyone doesn't like you. Kennedy is alive. <laughs> Donald Trump wins. <laughs> I'm not saying he should. It's just that's the subliminal message. That's uh, uh, I actively <laughs> have to go and edit something out. <laughs> I hope you leave this part in. Like, mm -hmm. leave like a thing. Be like, so we had to. Uh, well, and then it just comes back to that. Like, there's only been three times, and then right. we can't let them know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. people are gonna ask us in person, and I don't. I'll have no problem telling you what it was. But <laughs> right. Destin would have a problem with you hearing my uh, inherently stupid mind. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I try. I love you. I love you, bud. Hmm. Piece well, of shit. <laughs> Look at you, frumpy piece of shit. Save it for the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, that's June second at the Attic Comedy Club in Columbus Roast Battle. Um, well, also, I'm on. I, I'm on the uh, the sixth. Also at the Attic for comedy contest. Def Goldblum has a show May uh, the twenty eighth. May 28th uh, is yes. next Friday. Uh, it's uh, Def Goldblum's late night double feature comedy show at Ruby Tuesday Live. Uh, it's last Friday of every month. This month, uh, uh, we got Destin Richardson, Caitlin Minoski, our uh, headliner uh, from out of town, a uh, little man by the name of uh, Alexander Timms. Yes. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he he lived here for a while, and uh, and he's now hitting it uh, big in St. Louis. He's been he's been putting out some really funny stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited to have him have him in town. So yeah, and then uh, also you can catch Def roasting me again uh, twice a month. At Dest Fest, he's on the final showcase, aka the, the roast of me. Yeah, and there will be. Uh, I, I feel like I'll have more time to uh, give you shit. We only get five jokes at the first one. Yeah, the first one we only get the five. So uh, I will not judge you uh, if I hear those five jokes again later in the month. But um, I, know, I know there'll be more. Oh yeah, you'll, you'll I was going to say like I'm the on a bridge. I I I get a curtail and understand uh, it's five jokes. Therefore, I got to make sure I, I I sort them properly. Whereas the roast. Uh, yeah, that it can be. I can honestly have a little more uh, uh, storytelling and uh, just talk about how how truly white trash you really are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's Death Fest, uh, end of June. But also, uh, Def, any social any social medias you want people to follow? Uh, uh, Def Goldblum Comedy on Instagram. Uh, I do old man posting on Facebook, not super often, but I uh, usually post for the events and such uh, on Facebook, uh, Def Goldblum. Uh, and uh, I uh, I have a TikTok and a Twitch. I, I have, I've, I've actually been starting to get active on Twitch. Uh, we've been test piloting. And that's just the Parkinson's. Well, well, I've been test piloting. Yeah, that's just the Parkinson's. <laughs> I have Parkinson's. Uh, well medicated. Forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah, 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 one of those things. Uh, it, I, we have like we we both have a lot of the jokes. They're just shaky you know, <laughs> at best. Uh, no, uh, but you can find Def Goldblum comedy on Twitch. Uh, we've been testing uh, uh, streaming on a uh, to a, a small group on Discord. So I've had a private Discord serve uh, server for a while, uh, and so we're gonna start. Uh, pumping that on on Twitch because uh, we've been playing uh, some weeby games like very anime, yeah. and I've just been critiquing just like how how like I'm their t I'm supposedly their target demographic, and just how <laughs> <laughs> like uh, how uncomfortable I am as as the because like there's some of the things I'm like yeah this is or if I'm not the target target demographic my eight year old daughter is. And that's even scary, you know? yeah. Right. So uh, yeah, you will have to check it out. We'll be uh, streaming on Twitch soon. Def Goldblum comedy. Solid. Well, hey Def, thanks for coming no, by. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, let's do drugs. Yeah, hell yeah. It's it's hilarious because at the I end the Mark episode was saying don't do drugs. This one, let's do drugs. Yeah, Def, do drugs. <laughs> Actually, there's another one. Uh, dollar sign Def, not for drugs. Cash out. Always. Anyway, thanks again. Check us out.